Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate Santana. I'm a wife and a mom of three-year-old Olivia Joy and six-month-old tomorrow, Eden Elizabeth. And today is part two of a 35 video series on how we are doing a homeschool co-op this year based on the seven days of creation. I will link the first video down below and also up here in a card that you can click on if you have not started there. We are in the middle of unit one, which is all about the first day of creation. So day one is mostly about the separation of dark and light, but we have basically split it into five separate lessons. And I am talking to you about lesson two today, which is all about light. Next week will be the separation of dark and light, learning about that. The fourth lesson of this unit will be on the fact that the light is called day. And the fifth lesson will be that dark is called night. And we will also have a culminating end of unit activity on the fifth lesson. So today is all about lesson number two, which is what we did today. So the first thing we did after everybody came in and sort of greeted each other and we set up is that we read out of Genesis. Again, we reviewed Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2, which we talked about last week. And today we read Genesis 1, 3, which is where God says, let there be light and there was light. So that is the frame of the whole day. The first activity we did took the longest. We made shadow boxes. So essentially what you would need to do this at home is to have some sort of box. A lot of us just had like Amazon boxes or diaper boxes or something like that. And we had it open at first, like the top was open and kids were decorating or making some sort of scene inside their box. The older kids made like an ocean theme. The younger kids just kind of like piled figurines in there, but you'll want some animal figurines. Olivia had some Legos, some trains. The older your kid is, the more complex they can make the scene inside their box. Another good idea is to take construction paper and you can cut things out and use tape to kind of hang it from the top of the box so that when you put the lid over, there's like hanging stuff down into their scene. The more time you have and the older your kid is, you can really make your shadow box pretty interesting. Once we gave the kids a sufficient amount of time, maybe 20, 25 minutes to just create and make their box, we taped the top closed and used a box cutter to cut a very small door in the side where you could essentially put your eye up to the door and the entire door was covered. And the point of this was to show kids that without any light coming into the box, there's complete darkness. Even though the box is not empty, you cannot see anything. And all of them did a really good job with this from the two-year-old to the six-year-old. I can't see anything, right? So they put their eye up to the shadow box and they could see nothing. So then we talked about what is the purpose of light? Light is there so that we can see what is around us. And without light, something might be there, but we can't perceive it. We can't see it. And so then after they saw that it, that they couldn't see anything, we cut, we use a box cutter again to cut a hole either in the top or on the side as a window. And with the window open and the light coming in, they looked through the door again and they saw their scene that they made inside, whether it was the ocean scene or just a pile of animals or whatever they had in there, they could actually see it. So we talked about the purpose of light is to illuminate what is around us and to show us what is there, right? We can't see what is happening without light. So then we kind of cleaned that up and we got up out away from the table and came over to the floor and we did a an activity where we used light to make a rainbow. Now, to be honest, I should have done more research on this, but I just didn't have time to exactly be able to explain to them how a rainbow is in light or how light is made of the colors of the rainbow. I was just kind of like, yeah, you, you use the light to make a rainbow, but you could research this even more. Essentially what we did was we took a glass tray, um, a glass, I want to say it was like a pan actually. So it had some height to it. We filled it up with water and then we took a handheld mirror. The mirror was probably like as big as my face, like one that you would hold up to look in and we put it into the water pan at an angle. Then we took a piece of white paper. So the mirror was angled like this way. And on the wall right here, we hung a piece of white paper. We turned off all the lights and then um, shown a flashlight from our phone into the mirror. And the mirror essentially, the light went down, hit the mirror and then through the water reflected a rainbow onto the white paper on the wall and the kids were loving it. They were actually taking turns like standing in front of the rainbow so the rainbow would get on their clothes or on their hands or on their face. 
so they were taking turns sort of playing with the rainbow for a while we talked about that and the kids had a lot of fun just sort of running in front of the rainbow and trying to move the mirror around and whenever the water moves the rainbow kind of moves like in waves across the wall too so it was pretty cool we only had this set up for one like only one setup but if you have multiple mirrors and multiple kids you could have them doing different mirrors um, and different rainbows across the wall Obviously, if your wall is white, you wouldn't need a white piece of paper. The only reason we did is because the walls in the barn where we are are very dark brown, so it would have been hard to see the rainbow. After that, we talked about some of the different properties of light. So we talked about how light goes straight through something. So we actually took magnetiles um, that are like they're see-through, but they're colored. And we held them up to our flashlights and shown them on different kids. So we took like a pink magnetile, put the flashlight on it, and then had a kid stand right here. And you could see like their whole body and shirt had this pink light on it. And we talked about the fact that the light was going from the flashlight straight through onto that kid. It wasn't turning and going, you know, onto another kid. Only that one kid was pink. So light moves in one direction and um, it moves straight. So we talked about that. We showed them lots of different colors. They all had turns, turning different colors with the magnetiles. Then we shown a light or shown the flashlight through different types of paper. So through construction paper, through regular like printer white paper and through tissue paper. If you have like cellophane or glitter paper, it could be really interesting to shine a light through that as well. And we talked about how the papers are different. So with the construction paper, only the one spot where the light is from the flashlight lights up. The rest of the construction paper really doesn't light up. But with the tissue paper, for instance, because it's much, much thinner, the light, the flashlight, actually lights the whole tissue paper up. So we held them side by side so that they could sort of compare and contrast. Um, what else did we do for the properties? Oh, we took a glass mason jar and a straw and we said, look, the straw is not broken. It's straight and everything like that. We had water in the mason jar and we put the straw in and we said, what happens? Look at the straw. And they were like, it looks bigger. So the straw that is in the water looks bigger. And we talked about how when light travels through water, it kind of distorts things and the straw looks sort of broken. So everyone had a chance to look at the straw like in and out, in and out. And we talked about, is the straw really breaking? Is the straw really getting bigger? It's not, it's just appearing that way because that's what happens when light goes through water. Um, then we did... I'm trying to think what the next thing was. I know we did a candle. Did we do anything else in between that? I think maybe it was just a candle. So we lit a candle in the dark and they looked at how the light was flickering and sort of moving around and how um, the candle itself, the flame was a light and it was orange and all of that. And then at the end of that activity, we talked about how it's dark in here, but every time that we light something up, either our flashlight or the candle, we are lighting up the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome that light. And we read out of John 1, 5, where it says the light has shined in the dark and the darkness has not overcome it. So after that activity, talking about the properties of light, and you could definitely throw more things in when it comes to the properties of light. Um, you could do like shadows, shine a light on something and see the shadow on the wall. There's so much you could do there, but we just had a limited amount of time. We did snack time, we did light colored food. So we did pineapple, we did pumpkin muffins and string cheese. And then the kids helped to serve it to each other again. They had to wait until everyone was done. And then they um, actually, as they were eating, I brought in this little uh, rocket light that Olivia got for her birthday. And it has, um, it's like a rocket with little stars in it. And there's a light inside that changes colors. So it goes from red to orange to yellow, green, blue. And they could watch that. That was like our light as we ate snack. And everyone was very into the rocket changing colors. So that was a cool addition. After snack, we did um, a, another activity. I read them Matthew 5, 14 through 16, where it talks about you being the light of the world and a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Therefore, shine your light among men so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. And we did self portraits of the kids being a light. So a lot of the parents helped to actually draw the outline of the kid. And actually, let me show you Olivia's because I'm about to laminate it. 
So this is her self-portrait. I just drew like the head and the body and then she drew the hair, she drew the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Um, she colored her person in. I helped her with some stars around. She made the sun. All the kids did a really awesome job with their light self-portrait. And we talked about how you are a light. Be a light in the world and be shining. So that is our self-portrait in our arts and crafts activity. As they were doing their arts and crafts activity, I actually had a playlist on Spotify that I made out of songs um, like This Little Light of Mine, In the Light by DC Talk, um, and a few other light-themed songs that we were listening to while we were doing arts and crafts. So if you have any other activities that you want to add to your light day, you totally could. You could do light for a while. With older kids, they can explore even more of like the science-y stuff behind light. But for us, we have super young kids, so we're just trying to make it really interesting and like have a wow factor and also have them sort of interact with it a little bit. But we weren't getting too much into like the science behind it. After that, the kids cleaned up and we played again. They just had some free play and time to interact with each other. It wasn't as much as last time, maybe like 15 minutes left of free play because the activities were a little bit longer this week. I hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, don't forget to subscribe so that you can stick around for all of the videos. There will be 33 more weeks worth of preschool co-op ideas. Um, you could do this by yourself. You could do this with other families in order to homeschool with your preschooler according to the seven days of creation. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and share with those who may be trying to homeschool this year but want activity-based stuff and not like worksheets or workbooks or even having to buy a curriculum. I hope that this was helpful and I will see you guys next week. Bye guys. <laughs>